Hi guys, so I'm here today to do a book review of The Collector by John Fowles. This is a Red Spine Vintage Classics edition published in 2004 and the original was published in 1963. So the premise of this book, the story follows a young man named Frederick. Now Frederick is a very resentful young man, was raised by his aunt and feels very hard done by, in, by the world. One thing he does love to do is collect butterflies. He steadily becomes more and more obsessed with the young women in his street however and although he thinks they can never be, suddenly he wins some money and he thinks, now I have money. He can get the girl, but not in the traditional sense by wooing her, but instead using the money to set up a kind of dungeon in his basement, although a comfortable one, and kidnapping the young women. It's essentially about a psychotic young man who decides to kidnap a young woman and keep her hostage in the hopes that she will fall in love with him as he believes he is with her. A very disturbing premise and a very disturbing book overall. Fowles definitely manages to capture the atmosphere you would expect and hope from, from a story like this. It is very unnerving and as the first half is told from the perspective of the kidnapper, it is all the more disturbing, much like the works of Vladimir Nabokov and John Burnside who have told stories of horrific deeds from the perspective of the people committing those deeds who obviously do not consider what they're doing wrong, so it gives it a very unnatural, uneasy narrative to the story. It also provides for a somewhat unreliable narrator. Now the structure of this book however means that the second half is actually told from the perspective of the kidnapped girl, Miranda. Miranda was an art student and whilst she is being kept hostage by Frederick she keeps a diary as he basically will buy her anything she wants um, to decorate this room. He, he, in his own head he just wants to make her happy although by keeping her prisoner and it is incredibly disgusting but she has a diary and she keeps a diary while she was there. Once we reach the midway point of this book we go back to the beginning when Miranda is kidnapped and read her diary from the moment she starts keeping it in this basement cell. So basically we get the same story told twice from two different perspectives in two very different styles. One a day-to-day -day narrative um, story, the other a diary. It kind of completes the unreliable narrator however we see how his interpretation of her behaviour was wrong in the first half. It's, it's interesting, it, it does add a whole new level to the story and kind of makes you go back and feel even more disgusted by what happened in the second half. It just emphasises it and makes you feel it all again ten times worse. Because of this however I must say I read the second half a lot more slowly than I read the first half. With the first half I did not know what was coming. I didn't know what to expect from the story. I, it kept me on edge and I was really intrigued to see how things would go although he hinted at things that might happen in the future and um, because he was telling the story with hindsight but obviously by the second half I was reading the same story essentially just from a different perspective so I did read it a lot more slowly because I didn't have that same push to find out what was going to happen although the second half goes slightly further in time than the first half does I knew what was coming. I knew the story so it wasn't quite as compelling although possibly more disturbing. We also heard a lot about Miranda's life outside of um, this um, prison from before she was kidnapped and the people in her life and I didn't always enjoy that unfortunately so I think that maybe took away from the second half for me. I did however really enjoy this book even if the second half was slightly slower paced. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars and I think John Fowles' writing is amazing and so well suited or used in a really excellent way um, to portray this subject and a lot of people recommended this to me because I enjoyed The Dumb House by John Burnside and they're very similar and very different. Obviously the first half is told in the same kind of way that the entire Dumb House is told which is from the perspective of the psychopath and I think if you like the Dumb House you'll probably really like this but I would try not to compare them too much. I did give the Dumb House 5 stars because I enjoyed it more but they are different books and I still really enjoyed this and I'm definitely going to be reading more of John Phil's work. I think they all have quite disturbing themes, I think he's got quite a disturbing imagination so I'm really excited to check those out. All in all I would recommend this book, it just didn't quite hit the fifth star for me. 